Well, can you give us a quick background? So what are we talking about here? So what is NFT Philly? NFT Philly was started by our founder, Squiddy. So I think probably like a year and a half ago, he started people that were into NFTs just like him and the uh, same kind of like community that he was into. Almost a little over a year ago, he announced a meetup from the NFT Philly account. About seven or eight of us showed up. And most of these guys are top shot people. I was the only non-top shot person. We just met up that one time and then... We knew some, we were on something like something, you know, interesting, something like strange was in the air, you know? And then we just kind of had like more meetups that weren't really like anything official or publicly announced. We'd reached out to people that we knew in the space. And then the next meetup was like, 12 people. And the meetup after that was 20 people. And then we started doing like official. And that was earlier this year in April was it like our first official event. So to answer your question, it started off as just the Twitter account. Now it's a organization i guess um that just brings the web3 nft community together in philadelphia hopefully that answers your question that's good i was in this space for a minute but i started the other way workshop slash corporate like deep in there that was successful too it's just selling tickets and everything was a lot harder we've been lucky to have sponsors that are like into nfts as well so we've had Matt from uh, Splinterland sponsor us and Jason from uh, Glue Society, you know, super into NFTs. And, and he's just like, hey, I own some venues and stuff. Um, if you guys ever want to host an event at our venues, we're like, okay, we'll do that. We like the, the freeness of everything. We kind of want to keep it that way for as long as we can until we do bigger conference style things, which I'm sure people will be happy to pay for. But right now, trying to keep it free, trying to keep it, you know, low key and just building like event by event. Yeah, I like how I can just bring friends in. I don't have to tell them ahead of time. You know, you're not doing it like on a Tuesday. That's so cool. I'm so happy to hear about this. I went to college in Philly. It's where I met Will, actually. Since then, haven't lived there. Um, and I live in Beijing now, where it, uh, uh, in China. And you can't really have any events talking about Web3 and crypto just because everything is uh, banned, at least domestically here. Locally in Philly, there's lots of stuff wrapping up. I wonder, like, what is the breakdown of the types of people who come in? Like, what are what are they interested in um, in the space for? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. It's everybody. Like, yeah, it started off as like Top Shot collectors and me, a board ape collector, I guess. So, you know, started off as collectors, but then you know, as we're grow, growing, you know. It's, Programmers, it's people with their own projects, you know, it's people like William, people like Matt from Splinterlands, it's people, you know, like Jason that are into like hospitality, it's people, I want to shout out to, uh, to Made Aware Trip over here with his own uh, NFT project. Um, so it's just people like that, just like, you know, creating things and wanting to like bounce their ideas off of other people working together. Um, so yeah, it's a healthy mix, it's definitely a healthy mix. It's not like super corporate, like, we haven't done like a super corporate event yet, but we are planning one. And yeah, it's mostly like, you know, younger people um, mm -hmm. just doing their own thing or just like collecting or just interested in the technology of it all, like the future of it all. That's great. And what are, what are the setups like? Is it like a, a bar with a networking area so far? Or Mostly, I mean, a good amount of the events are just hanging out. But the one event we had at Vesper um, in August, we did like two hours of like workshops. So we got... I think, I think it was five, five, like, you know, 20, 30 minute workshops. And then we do our, uh, Philly Shilly hour, which is basically giving, <laughs> giving everybody one to two minutes that wants to talk about like what they're working on, like the project or whatever, or like, you know, shout out somebody. Um, so we give, you know, it's kind of like a rapid fire kind of thing. And that's been very, yeah. very popular because it gives like, you know, 30, 40, 50 people the opportunity to like, introduce themselves, I guess, to the crowd. So that's. 
kind of the format. At worst, we'll do like a little Philly Sheely hour. Otherwise, we're just hanging out. Um, we're hoping to get, you know, more structured kind of like conference kind of style stuff. All this takes time. So that's kind of where we're at now. Small community vibe. Things get bigger. I don't know if there's any way to, to, to keep that. Because eventually, we all think that there's going to be a lot more people who are interested in this stuff. And then uh, Philly events could get to the size of New York events. You know, how do you keep the culture when we start having side parties, you know, that's that's when we're made too. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll throw a side party. Maybe I'll be at a NFT Philly out front with an LED truck, like the ads on the side. I mean, we'll worry about that problem when we get too cool. I mean, for now, maybe we can give like people a PO app that like come to these like original events. But Barman, like what's, what's the vision? What's your vision? So far this year, it's kind of been like, just make the next event slightly better if not a lot better than the previous event. So we're just kind of mingling event to event. So it's probably like every six weeks to like two months we have an event, which is a central kind of resource for like onboarding, connecting people, providing that resource. I guess in its most basic sense, kind of like a Craigslist for this kind of stuff in Philadelphia, <laughs> you know, wait for people to do this. Ultimately, conference-style events at like the convention center or whatever could happen in like a year, two years, three years. It really depends on what kind of sponsorship we get over time. Yeah. One step at a time. Okay, so that's your vision for the group. What's your vision for where's Earth going? And all this stuff adds up to something. So I want to see like, what's your perspective on that? You know, I'm, I'm honestly in it for like the community aspect of it. I've met some great people doing this and I enjoy this aspect of like bringing people together. I mean, as far as the, the crypto aspect of it goes, it gives individual creators or like small groups of creators the power to build and like control these assets in a web 2 world i guess like everything right now is like you know controlled by facebook twitter blah 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 you know web 3 gives people the opportunity to be their own boss in a way or like new avenues for like opportunities for people there's definitely like a lot of opportunity here for individual creators like you know own their work and like monetize their work so you're telling me if nft fell off i fell off we all fell off you're telling me you'd be right back on the scene at Vesper, at wherever, with 2600, or having events where we all paint together, or something like that, as long as the people are there? See, I wouldn't do that in like a previous life, myself. The way it's worked out with Web3, like sure, I probably. Like NFTs, not, it's not just like, you know, profile pictures, it's tons of stuff. It's like music NFTs and like, you know, memberships and access and all that kind of stuff the community the artists the people the crazy clothes the mixed media this is it it comes together you know maybe in the past this was sex and rugs drugs sex and rugs sex and drugs and rock and roll right don't say rugs yep maybe this is the same thing maybe this is our culture right maybe back then you know you do enough drugs and rock music and you start having pizza people keep showing up making various art mixed media cover art for albums Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe this is our generation of, you know, maybe maybe Spotify and online streaming destroying all of our music, nonlinear, cutting up all of our music and separating everybody from everybody. Maybe this is the artistic renaissance for the generation. Yeah, I mean, we are in a weird time where we're, we were like locked up for like two years and people are kind of like clamoring to get out and like now there's this whole new technology and like way of doing things to kind of like blends together think of how bad the art scene was five years ago the only thing you could do as a visual artist would be on instagram where you're no different than the wallpaper website because nobody knows if anything you're making is copied or not music is destroyed by spotify i mean everything is just cut up you can't sell full albums you're lucky if you get a youtube video attached to your music like this was the scene five years ago i went to a record release party in philly in some abandoned parking lot and there were like 20 people there. That's as much as you could get out of like an album. And that was pretty rare to even find a party like that. Now we're doing that all the time. So not even pandemic. I mean, just like five years ago, I think we're killing it. Yeah. And there's a, you know, the people that are into this stuff, just like the collectors are clamoring for stuff to collect. So there's like a built-in kind of audience. How do music NFTs work? I get the collector aspect, but you can't, there's no way to like show it on, on a profile or anything do people just collect like collect it for themselves i mean that's a great question i don't actually know because <laughs> we do have a uh philadelphia based rapper who is super into nfts you should get him on the show 
Yeah, when we talk to various artists who have like NFT projects from the start, it's probably just like membership. You own the NFT, you know, maybe you get like VIP access, like there's certain like, you know, levels or whatever to your, uh, to your NFT. Oh, uh, okay. So then it's related to tickets and live events. There's also like split up like royalties. I know people have like experimented with that. I'm not super sure how far that's gotten, but the technology is definitely there for like splitting up royalties and. Yeah, the royalties are interesting because if I get a music NFT from an artist I really like, I probably wouldn't wouldn't want to trade it. And there's probably most of the people who, or I think most of the people who would buy it. So like, where is the royalty? Dude, royalties is like so 1990s in NFT world. Let's go take music. That barely makes money. Okay, let's let's take the only thing that we know that makes money in NFT, aka OpenSea, and let's staple that onto music. That's what a lot of people be like. They'd be like, okay, let's just go find the money. Let's find the existing playbook. I think it's so uninspired. Who's making money on royalties on music? Nobody. Who's making money trading royalties on music? Like, stop. Who wants to collect? I like music. Do I want to collect the royalty? Let me lay one quick idea. How about you sell a token that gives exclusive access to remix? How about authorized remixes? But then what if I profit more money off your remix than you ever did uh, off the original sale? You're worried about the money and the royalties. I'm worried about the collecting and the, the fan support. So then why not just a free mint and then just post it up like a SoundCloud link and just treat your, your Web3 collection like SoundCloud? Um, I mean, there are plenty of people already doing that and building their community and fan base. And then you see uh, like multimillionaire artists, uh, like especially over the, this past year, uh, like Flume, Halsey, um, all these music artists, they came out with an NFT and they've done nothing with it. They provided zero utility. And that's not to say that they... They won't, you know, five years from now or three years from now when it's mass ad adopted, you know, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you remember those those NFTs I sold back in uh, 2022, the beginning of 2022? Um, you know, now now they're they're worth, you know, backstage access or whatever. Um, but I, I don't think there is a clear vision for a lot of uh, music artists because of, like you said, uh, the statement uh, prior is... Um, you know, let's just take something we know makes money and, and you know, put it on OpenSea uh, where we know that a place that makes money and hopefully it works out best. The tokens for backstage passes, obviously. How about a credit as a top fan on the next album? How about artistic input into my next album? How about you get to vote on which instrument I bring back? And I'm not saying it's a good or bad idea, but like now's the time to try. I don't ever see that happening. Like imagine telling Drake, yeah, you have to put me on your album because I have the most fat voting power in the OVO DAO. Yeah, it could be tried. Someone can subject themselves to that, but I, I don't foresee that happening or at least not going over well. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do like how, you know, you just kind of, um, you're just trying to utilize uh, music NFTs in a different way other than backstage passes or, uh, ticketing, but you know, I, I've actually thought about this a lot because my original project idea was all about ticketing uh, for music events because I'm um, avid music festival goer. And how can we empower artists uh, to sell NFTs, you know, for their shows? They have 30 shows on their tour, they could do 30 different NFTs for each one uh, of their tour, and then the Coachella special, you know, because they're playing at a festival on their 30th one. Um, and then they could have VIP packages, uh, like for bottle services in these areas. And then people are also, you know, collecting it in one way or another. Like, what if it's a bonus track to that tour album? So if you want to hypothesize and then create a business plan, let me know. I'm yeah. about it. Yeah, but, but the problem with festivals is you can't, you can't compete with, like, Live Nation. You can't compete with these guys that do it today. They're, they're just going to buy it out. John at Live Nation pays people for the event, for the monopoly of the event and to sell the ticket, right? So he'll front the revenue of an event, and not many people can do that. These guys have already bought the tickets out from your event. And the problem with music NFTs is there's no player that can track that today that's kind of mainstream for Web3. You buy a music NFT... What are you playing that on to allow that to get monetized back to the, to the artist? 
Yeah, people are talking about just monetizing the Spotify account. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, exactly. So, so then, what's the what's no. the benefit? Yeah. So, so that's the problem. The bridge, the bridge between Web three, the NFT, decentralization. But like, that's that's competing against how these businesses and how these artists today drive monetization. Don't they, like artists make a good amount of their money also from like touring too, right? So. Yeah, but but then that's the thing, right? The touring, the touring, these big event production ticketing companies, they own those those concerts, right? So yeah, they can give away X number of seats, but like the real utility in terms of like unlocking that to scale, you're you're not going to get it because you need someone like Live Nation, you need someone that owns the event to give away. So like to give away bottle service or something at a at an event, it, it's it's not. You might be able to do that here and there, but not at scale. Because like, unless you own the box at Madison Square Garden, which you paid forty, fifty thousand dollars for, right? Besides that, like, you need the event sponsors to give you that. Outside of like whatever is allocated to the artist per their contract that they can give away to family and friends. There's a startup in Philly that's got funded by Comcast that is CTO came from my nation. They're trying to compete with them, uh, following a similar model of kind of working with smaller events and venues to stand up events that are powered by the blockchain, but from a consumer standpoint, not requiring a wallet or anything of that nature. It just gets set up in the background. Hey, Will, I, I just wanted to uh, real quick, you know, tie this back to how this conversation all started, uh, talking about NFT Philly and, uh, you know, how proud I am personally to have met the people uh, that I have, you know, and for the people that have started this, like Barman and Tyrone and Squiddy, um, the people I've met, like Nick and Fine Dart and Jason over here, uh, yourself, William, met you through Ellie, through the Rawlings stuff, Daniel, I believe you as well. And, and that's the power yeah. of NFT Philly. That's what it's done. And that's the connection it's brought for me. And and I feel magic when I'm in this city. When I'm with these people that, that share this one connection, uh, we're all in the same room for the same reason. And that's something beautiful. That's my whole life in Philly kind of started when I started going to the Brave scene back in, you know, 10 years ago. And that was the scene. We are we're all united under one roof for one reason. And it was never about like, oh, why are you doing this? It's like, what are you doing? Rave scene 10 years ago, you missed shampoo. Oh my God. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I missed out. I mean, listen, I got the show tech error, so I was blessed for that. You know, like, like I'm, ve I'm very lucky. I love NFT Philly. I love everything it's done. Uh, the people that it's brought me in, the opportunities it has. Um, I truly feel connected. Uh, and long-term vision for what I see NFT Philly uh, being is exactly what Barman said is like, if I meet somebody in this city and they don't have an idea about what an NFT is, I'm going to be like, Hey, join the NFT Philly discord. We got onboarding, we got uh, NFT music, we have NFT fashion and each one of those things might have an event coming, you know, that month or whatever. That's what I hope to see long-term uh, for NFT Philly. Th thanks for even having me up here to, to talk that piece, you know? Yeah, if you guys don't know, NFT Hoarder, Jason over here, is a huge, uh, I guess, like, influence on our on our success of NFT Philly. You know, I, I, I do what I can. I, 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 uh, I know, but you I do so much. To, I try to, uh, you know, under-promise and over-deliver. That's exactly what you do. Mm -hmm.